Good evening. Time for that visit. A few weeks ago, we had a guest by the name of Kana Shiba Shan. Um, we were doing a psychic reading for a young lady and a baby. So just so you, to remind you who my guest for today is, my repeat guest, Shana Shi Kana Shiba Shan. And I'm so glad that you made that long journey to come and visit with us again. Thanks. Um, in, the, in the title, it said Rosalind, Black Pioneers. Now, some of you will recognize Rosalind as the little town where uh, they turned into Alaska. They, um, they filmed Northern Exposure, the TV series, the, uh, series there. And so just so you have an idea, it's in Eastern Washington. What's the biggest town? What's the closest the town? The closest, largest town is Ellensburg. Ellensburg, okay. So that's where Roslyn, Washington is. And before we go into our historical visit of Roslyn, I wanted to ask you a couple of personal things, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. We got, we had such a good time the last time with the baby, I never got to asking you what your name stands for. Oh, Kanashibishan means come out teacher. That's okay. Hindu. And that it's very appropriate today because you'll be our, our teaching guide as far as the uh, history of your town that you um, are native to. And from what I understand, what you are wearing today is of, of historical value. So maybe you'd like to explain that to the friends. Yes, it is. And I'm very proud and honored to um, be able to wear this because mm -hmm. this dress, pioneer dress, and uh, the robe was worn by my mother. Mrs. Ethel Craven, when she was picked as the first black pioneer queen in Rawls in Washington. Wonderful. The head gear is a little different. She had a, just, her hair was just done a different way. And she but, had on a crown, didn't she? And she had a tiara, and I couldn't get it mm -hmm. for my sister because she had packed it away, and she just mm -hmm. moved to California, so otherwise I would have wore that also. We go with the flow here, Half so. Half the flow. <laughs> had it is. Okay. Um, we have an hour, so we have to cramp a whole lot of information into this one hour, so I think we better get to it. Okay, huh? sure. Okay. So uh, would you like to lead and, and get started on, okay, on well, how, how Rosalind came to be in the first place? Okay, well, mm -hmm. I think, first of all, I'm going to let you hold this picture of the picture. There's two or three pictures of Rawls in Washington in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And the first one is the Main Street in 1882. And uh, you can see it was a very small place. And it's changed some, but not very much. And uh, the next one shows it used to snow a lot. I remember when we used to have about six foot of snow in the wintertime. And this is one of their heaviest snowfalls. And uh, the, the next part shows um, which which would you like to so you can point to it? Oh sure. There okay. you go. My, my famous And this is here. a horse and a buggy, the last one. And it was uh, brought in the area by residents in eighteen ninety two for the memorial services because in the mines, because of the bad conditions they used to have accidents, mm -hmm. explosions. And quite a few people died during that explosion in eighteen ninety two. And then number two mines. There were were ten mines in um, Rawson, which I didn't realize until about fifteen years ago because I know my dad worked about four and I didn't know about the others because they had closed down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why uh, it's very important to me uh, is because a black, there were not too many blacks in Rawls and Washington before 1888. Mm -hmm. There was one gentleman um, that was there and he owned a livery stable. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they brought a gentleman, and if you'll hold this picture, this I will. Okay. I want to say something here too. The quality of these pictures, they are very old. Keep yes. in mind, we copied these of the originals. Yes. So, and, and Tom Water, Washington, and Chehalis was also founded That's by right. Afro Americans That's and right. um, uh, freed slaves. And we'll mm -hmm. cover that another day. Now, now the woman holding the picture is my sister Beulah. And the picture is quite small, but it's a picture of the gentleman called James Shepperson who brought the first carload of blacks uh, into Rawls and Washington in 1888 mm -hmm. and it was in April and this gentleman uh, was hired by the um, Northern Northwest Improvement Company which was owned by the Northern Pacific Railroad to uh, 
get people to break a union strike. He went to Georgia. He went to uh, Alabama. He went to Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. And then he came up to Illinois, mm -hmm. and he recruited them. But when they recruited them, they were not honest. All they advertised was good job, good pay. So yes. the mm -hmm. they still do that. They give you bits and pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to say something. Um, you stayed with me yesterday because you came so far. Yes. And um, we had a picture of your father with a, a gun, with a, a rifle. Oh, a what person. Was it? it wasn't my dad, a but it was a gentleman a who had a gun, mm -hmm. a black man. And what happened was when they came into town, after they got to town, which I'd like mm -hmm. to continue that story, how they got there. Oh, I interrupt uh, all the time. But um, they had to have uh, people who knew how to shoot. Exactly. Bring them into Rawls because they did not stop in Rawls when they first came. They went past mm -hmm. because they had people waiting for them mm -hmm. in Rawls with guns and rocks and clubs. Um, and so they took them to Jonesville, mm -hmm. which is uh, about four miles above Rawlson. And there's a town called Ronald, and it's very close to that. Mm -hmm. And they'd have to bring him into town. Mm -hmm. And the mother said they used to get the tallest, and the biggest, and the darkest blacks, and give them guns, and they'd go in town to get the food. And that was what you saw, was one of the gentlemen that had. The gun, yeah. I, see, I thought it had, it was my mistake, I thought that had been, that was related to the strike, when they broke up the strike, that's why I had put But that's that. what it was, it you was. see. It was, okay, so I just Because they had brought him in, in as I said, they had brought him mm -hmm. in, yeah. and when they brought him in, because they had not told them the truth, yeah. they told him when they got to Colorado mm -hmm. that they're going to break a strike, and they picked up 20 Pinkerton guards to ride gun shot on those freight trains. They did not come in fancy cars. They came in cars like cattle. And they, they had a pot-bellied stove in them. And, uh, and they, decide, they, they got together and decided, well, should we go back or should we stay? Well, it's my assumption the railroad wasn't going to send them back. And they knew that. That's a long ways. But they weren't going to send them go back. back. Mm -hmm. So they decide they make the best of a bad situation and go forward. Mm -hmm. and they pick up 20 Pinkerton guards to ride gun, you know, with guns mm -hmm. to protect them because they knew they were going to hit mm -hmm. some problems. And they did for almost a year or two they had problems. But they did go, go into the mines and um, they become supervisors. Mm -hmm. They become the bosses. And what's important to me there is when I came along, which is 1933, which is almost... 40 some years later, mm -hmm. I didn't understand why some of the Caucasian people hated me. And my mom and daddy didn't talk. Mm -hmm. The older people didn't talk about it because it's so painful. Yeah, but that, that's how it was. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I found out what happened when I was in my 40s. Yeah. Then I could understand why they were angry. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, uh, my grandmother mm -hmm. came six months later when it had settled down. They brought the women, mm -hmm. they brought the men first. And in August, they brought the women. And my grandmother came on that train. Mm -hmm. And she had a little boy, and I don't know if we can find the picture, but she had a little boy that was about um, three and a half. Now, for people who didn't realize in those days, boys wore skirts, uh, little mm -hmm. things that looked like skirts. I'll take it for you. Okay, so you can see that he's, this is my uncle, Fred, and he's almost two and a half to three years old, and he has a, a very fancy skirt and jacket on. And this is my grandmother on the, maybe a pier on their left. Mm -hmm. And she was only 17 years old. And she had left because she had been married. Mm -hmm. And her husband wasn't doing quite the right thing, and his girlfriend was trying to poison her. So she divorced the man and caught a train. It was a good choice. A wonderful like choice. I'm glad choice. she made it because now I'm here. In as, in as far as the skirts, they're going to be back in fashion shortly. Yes. So you well, you know, they've worn skirts yeah. before. It's not the first yeah. time. But when I showed my children, they thought, well, who's that girl? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, boys at that time yeah. wore Perfect. that type of skirt until they're almost maybe 10 or 11, mm -hmm. some 14. And so that's how my grandmother got here. And she was a very, very strong, smart, black woman because she after she got here she homesteaded 250 acres by herself 
down in Mapton, which is down by Yakima. Mm -hmm. And she later sold that and bought a house in which I was born, a 12-room house. Mm -hmm. Before we go to the 12-room house, uh, what I wanted to bring up too is that uh, sometimes we talk about indigenous people mm -hmm. and, and our roots and things like that. And I understand that your family is some of, Na uh, of Native American mm -hmm. descent, but the rest of you are Geechees. Uh -huh. And for the friends that don't know what a Geechee is, those are the, the blacks of the Carolinas, the Ibus that, uh, from Nigeria mm -hmm. that were brought in as slaves to the West Indies, then they made their way to the Carolinas where they kept their language, their culture, their spiritual ways, and they were very good with horses, and they were so telepathic, it was said that Ibus could walk on water. Mm -hmm. And that's probably how you got the way you are, being the psychic that uh -huh. you are. Mm -hmm. My mother, too, is quite psychic. It's on her side mm -hmm. that, um, that they were. Mm -hmm. Not my dad, but my mama's side. So, so just wonderful mm -hmm. stock. And that mm -hmm. picture there, if you'll hold it up, is a picture of a coal mine. That's the cars with the coal, and they've dug down all through here to get this coal. And uh, so you can see they're way under the ground, and it's very, very dark. And I wish I had it, but they have a miner's cap, mm -hmm. and it was made out of metal, and it had a carbide lamp on it that went like this, wow. and they put it in and lit it and it didn't show very much. Mm -hmm. But it was very difficult work, very, very difficult. They lay, sometimes they're on the stomach mm -hmm. with a pick and a shovel. Oh. And it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, John L. Lewis was one of the men who was the head of the Teamsters. Mm -hmm. And uh, he helped to bring in the changes mm -hmm. where they were, um, let's say, mm -hmm. safer for the men. And I'll never forget my daddy and the m older men. It was like he was an idol. I mean, he became an idol, and whenever he would call a strike, they didn't care how hungry they were, mm -hmm. they walked out. They did, yeah. They, they just really admired him because he really was there to help the miner. And it was bituminous coal. There's two kinds. One's, I'll try to pronounce it, but it's been so many years, it's A-N-A-R-T-I-C, something like that. The other's bituminous. The first one is a hard coal, mm -hmm. and the second one is a soft coal. My brother just brought me about four bucketfuls of the bituminous coal that someone had in their um, shed about 30 years ago. No, you still have a you still have a a, a, a stove in your house. I've been wooden there. Wooden coal mm -hmm. stove. Wooden yes. Coal, coal mm -hmm. stove. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we use for heat. Mm -hmm. For the wood and then the coal we used to buy by the ton, mm -hmm. and uh, we would burn it. It made quite a, you know, it sod outside the house, mostly. Every, everywhere. <laughs> but it really made a lot inside. And when I remodeled yeah. the house upstairs, yeah. my husband and I, about four years ago, I forgot about it. Because mm -hmm. my mother had transferred to the heat on, to oil heat in one side, so we used the oil a lot. And we pulled the ceiling paper mm -hmm. off, and then they had this gauze. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and when we pulled that down, all this black, coal dust just hit us because I'd forgotten about coal yeah. see because we I use wood now rather than coal they don't bring it in because it's so expensive and most people don't have yeah it. now we buy them by the uh, instead of the ton we buy it by the pebble if you, you can find it by the pebble yeah if you can it's find so it it's yeah. very difficult to yeah. find here so uh, my uh, mother had uh, two children I mean two um, sisters and two brothers and um, she only weighed a pound and a half when she was born the doctor didn't think she's going to live, mm -hmm. but she lived till she's 86 years old. In those days, that was a small child. That was. She said they were so. She's so small they could hold her in the palm of the hand. Mm -hmm. And one time she told the story about how they put her in the bed and they lost her because someone threw. You know, shook the blanket. Mm -hmm. My. She's very tiny, but she, as I remember her, she's very strong. Four foot eleven, not very tall, mm -hmm. but very very strong and very loving. And my dad was six foot two. Mm -hmm. He came out of Texas. And that's uh, when you trace your genealogy, we can trace our dad's genealogy much better because um, his people lived longer than my mother's. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother's uh, mother only lived to 50, uh, till she was 10. So we don't know much when you go back genealogy mm -hmm. on her. But on his side, we've traced it down to the great grandmother who was a slave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did tell me yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And so Rosalind now has about 1,200 people. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes I think that includes, excuse me, the dogs and the cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially at night. It's very quiet. It's a wonderful place to be. It's mostly tourists now. There's mm -hmm. no coal mines now. They, they stopped in 1958, around 1958, the mm -hmm. last coal mine. They did strip mining for a while, but that didn't work. But I'd like to show a couple of picture, a picture of my mom there. Okay. And daddy. And that handsome man on the left side there, that's my daddy. He was called Rough Hand Sam. And my daddy was not rough, mm -hmm. but he had large, he wore a size 13 ring. He had large hands. That's large. And, yeah. um, and he dug so much coal that they called him Rough Hand Sam because mm -hmm. he dug coal fast and hard. And my mother was only four foot 11, as you can see there. And then this is my mother and my oldest sister. And this, if you can see, part of it is the old, it's a part of the porch on the old boarding house mm -hmm. that my grandmother brought for $1,000, the 12 room house. Yeah, now we go back to the boarding house. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was um, where all the children were born. Mm -hmm. And they were all born at home with midwives. And they all did very well uh, health-wise. Didn't have too many problems. It, it was a lot of fun. It had three stories. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't remember a lot about the top story. So I asked mother why. And she said, because we weren't allowed up there. Well, it was probably rented out. No, we weren't. Al it wasn't allowed up there when we got it because it was in bad repair. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because I yeah. wondered why I didn't remember. I remember the other two so much, and yeah. there, it was just wonderful. We moved from there, and in the 40s, we um, we moved to a small house because mm -hmm. it start, kept having fires. Now, this is some of my uh, daddy's people, and I think it's real important because um, the first one to the left. I got left, right, is my daddy's mother. And Lillian was telling me that they had the nose. She had yeah, the nose. Yeah, funky nose. Uh, and the Cherokee. Yes. And then the next one is my daddy's sister, Roxy. And then the other one is my daddy's sister. Also, she died very early. Now, my dad had um, more than that in his family, but they didn't, the men did not take pictures. And they didn't have very many cameras in those days like we have now. Mm -hmm. So to have a picture was something very, very special. So those pictures came out of old frames, mm -hmm. and they're very, very old. Yeah. These, Some this of them we here, took out to, uh, yeah. Yeah, yesterday. And uh, these are pictures of people, young people that came along with mom, mm -hmm. people that she knew. I don't know them. Well, the only one I know really well is this woman here. Her name was Mrs. Lula Eccles. That was my Sunday school teacher. Yeah, and you were fond of her. I, I really loved her. And as I was a teenager, mm -hmm. she took me kind of as a mentor. And I used to go get her wooden coal in and take care of her, make sure she got her mail, walk, and do all mm -hmm. those things for her. Uh, her mother was a teacher. And she was a seamstress. Mm -hmm. When I came along, there was very few blacks left. At one time, there's almost 2,000. Well, you were telling me the ethical background of Rosalind at one time. Will you, will let's, still go, is. let's go there for it a minute. It still is. It's mm -hmm. kind of mixed. Uh, they had English. Mm -hmm. They had Italian. Mm -hmm. They had um, Norwegian, mm -hmm. Irish, um, Czechoslovakian, mm -hmm. Yugoslavian, and black. So you could actually have a different holiday every day of the week if you had wanted to do that. And they did uh, mm -hmm. celebrate the uh, holidays. And another thing, they didn't want to be buried together. That's, yeah, that's where I was going next. So let's go, since that's fresh in our mind, let's, let's stop here in time. Let's stop in time, go to the, to the uh, cemeteries, and then we get back to the historical part of this. They have, I don't know, I don't know if it's 20 cemeteries, mm -hmm. but there's quite a few cemeteries that are known for their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, since they wouldn't allow themselves to be buried together <laughs> because of their problems that they felt, the lodges, and in those days, lodges buried people. Exactly. Because the other people privately did not have money. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, most of them were lodge cemeteries. Mm -hmm. As, as in, um, I know we talked as about Mason, the Mason lodges. Uh, mm -hmm. There's yeah. a Red Man's Lodge. Yeah. Um, there's about five or six there mm -hmm. that uh, there, some of them haven't been kept up because the people have died and their people have died and mm -hmm. no one else is left to take care of them. And then the way they got the black cemetery was unusual mm -hmm. because what happened was a black man was killed in an explosion in the mines and they didn't want to bury him in any of the other cemeteries. 
So the Northwest Improvement Company gave them a track of land to bury their people, mm -hmm. and it's now called Mount Olivet. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the blacks are buried. I think there's only about approximately, because the other graves have been asked for, believe me or, or mm -hmm. not, there's probably only about six or seven spaces left. Um, and then you told me something about that at a later time, like here very recently, they, they replaced <coughs> all the crosses and painted them. The Masons. The Masons. The black Masons mm -hmm. from Seattle, from Prince Hall, mm -hmm. decided to take on the project of um, developing and making the graveyard look better. Because my brother and my father and us have kept it since my, the older people died. Mm -hmm. We kept the best we could, which wasn't as good because it takes money. So they've really done a beautiful job on it. It looks very nice. And they made crosses and put in to represent the people who died because they don't know who's there. Mm -hmm. They know some, but they, a lot of people they don't know because mm -hmm. they didn't have markers. They didn't have money. Yeah. They were just buried. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, um, it's beautiful now. I wish I had brought a picture of it, but it's very, very nice now. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it on the tape that you had. It, it's it, really nice. It showed across the city, and when it rains, all the writing fades? Yes. Well, what happens is the paint fades mm -hmm. because um, there's a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. And there's probably at least three or four feet that goes on the cemetery every winter. And so it's really hard to keep them nice. And recently we had someone go through and break down 14 of them. We don't know who they are, but you know, that happens. Yeah, well, what we need to do is, uh, because you do have a wonderful museum now. Yes. And um, I think we uh, eventually, we're, we're going to do a fundraiser and see to it that the museum will be maintained, where we can raise <laughs> some money. and That'd be wonderful. We throw money for the, for the wooden crosses for the graveyard at the same time. And one of the reasons why they, the Masons decided to do it in Rawlson is because the first Order of Black Masons was established in Rawlson, Washington. Exactly. So you see how the circle goes? So mm -hmm. now we're back into the historical mm -hmm. part here. Yeah. And so it's, um, uh, but my family, I think they're quite a unique because they do come from a pioneer family. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not many left. There's one, two, there's two people besides my brother and his family there. There's not many blacks left there. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mother kept an oral record of the blacks in, in a pin here. And professors from all the Washington State and sometimes out of Washington State would come to her for the black history. Mm -hmm. I saw you on Channel 4 one time. You are part of a organization. Called the Black Pine, Rawls and Washington Black Pioneers. Pioneers, and that's where I saw you. And I mm -hmm. said, wow, yeah. And one of the reasons we made the organization was, was because my sisters and I recognized that Many people, including blacks mm -hmm. in Washington State, had no idea that there were black pioneers in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. Now, Washington became a state in 1898. Mm -hmm. So my mother, my grandmother came before Washington was a state. It was a territory. Mm -hmm. And there was also a gentleman who came before that. And he was one of, of what we call the first black cowboys. Yeah, that was fascinating to the lady at the office the mm -hmm. photo we have when we talked about that. And his name was Mr. Uh, Thornton. Mm -hmm. I just remember him as walking tall and proud. He was probably in his 60s when I remember him. Mm -hmm. But my sister told me that his father had been a chief. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why he walked so tall. We call it walking like a Native Americans. They walk very straight and mm -hmm. there's a certain walk. And he came before my the strike and things. Mm -hmm. and he was a black cowboy. Now, our opening shot was of, was it your mother? Yes. The opening shot was of your mother. Yes. And maybe you'd like to tell us how that came about okay. because it is really the state of Washington. I don't yes. know how good it showed up. Okay, well, it, um, the picture was put on a plaque mm -hmm. by the Washington State Black Masons to honor my mother for keeping the history. That's where it was. But the picture itself came about differently. What happened was when the United States had its bicentennial, the Parade Magazine uh, had a photograph contest. And it um, entered, there's 130,000 photographs entered That's to represent, mm -hmm. and they're going to pick 10 people mm -hmm. to represent what they thought represented the United States. Mm -hmm. And one of the pictures, the one that you saw in the opening, mm -hmm. that was picture was of my mother, who was one of the 10 picked 
at 130,000 isn't acres. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. With bicentennial. Yeah, so Robin is it's a done really by Barbara uh, Witt. She took place. the picture accidentally. Came by and said, "Mom, mm -hmm. let me take your picture." Mm -hmm. Mom was out there with her beautiful flowers that she loved, and she took the picture and and entered it just by accident, and it happened to win. And but it's in the Smithsonian Institute, I believe, in is Philadelphia. It? Yes. Wow. Uh -huh. Now it's it went in your traveling for room. a year. Mm -hmm. Went traveling for a year. Yeah. Now it's here, and the friends can enjoy mm -hmm. it on. Um, on our TV screen. My dad was very photogenic too, and there's a picture that was taken of him. He was very handsome. Uh, I very saw handsome. Him. I think mm -hmm. he was very handsome. Even when he was uh, older, I think he died around mm -hmm. 74. I always get the time wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was tall and handsome and gentle. And we used to go pick, uh, do migrant work. Mm -hmm. and my dad had picked cotton in Texas because he came from Texas. And he is, was known for picking more hops than anyone ever picked, because I think he picked 400 to 500 pounds of hops in one day. And hops are little, small, light. They're, they're not this big, and they don't weigh. They're like feathers almost. It's a lot of hops. And we used to go there to earn our money for clothes wow. and shoes. And all we had to do was pick 100, and we got a reward, big reward, 100 pounds. When I picked my first 100, I was so proud. Well, I guess so. That's a lot of <laughs> but hops. My dad, but one of the things, um, people after my dad died, I knew he was a helpful man because he'd always help anybody. And he had a good sense of humor and a beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. uh, a man came to the house and he told me how dad had helped save many people in the mines. You did tell me that. That's a wonderful story. And he was crying. This man actually was crying. And he must have been in his six, late 60s or mm -hmm. 70s. And he says what happened was... Um, the mine started to cave in, and so the, p uh, the head person said, everybody run. And so they ran, and they got out, and then they looked around, and they asked where this gentleman was. And they said, well, he's not here. My dad said, well, he's back there. And so they said, well, we need s uh, dad said, well, somebody needs to go get him, and nobody, nobody mm -hmm. would go get him. But my dad went back. Mm -hmm. And he lifted, they say, over a thousand pound rock off of him. That's my. what the man said. Yeah. And carried him out like a baby. My. And he he just cried and he never forgot it. Now, that's the kind of man my daddy was. We have uh, the whole family is very, very strong. Very, very strong. But then his uh, grandmother um, was a slave and she had 26 children. Mm -hmm. 26. 26, somebody said 36. She was what they call a breeder. Mm -hmm. And she brought 10 out of slavery. My. And she came to Texas from South Carolina. That's a lot of children. And my uh, grandfather was nine years old when slavery was over. Imagine so if we had to endure something, uh, not slavery, but to transport 10 children yes. from one place to another. Our children are a little more unruly than they were then. <laughs> oh, yes. I don't think we could do that right now, do you? Well, I could. Only because mine would be like, Daddy trained us. We were not unruly. <laughs> That's because of our training. Yeah. But I, I have, um, Rawlson's a special place, I think, because um, it has a natural beauty. Mm -hmm. In I've fact, been now there, it's turning, yeah. like I said, into a mm -hmm. tourist yeah. place. And Hundreds of people come every weekend, hundreds, mm -hmm. into the woods to enjoy the water and the woods and the quietness and the beautiful sky in the summertime. So it's a very, very special place. Um, my, pe my mother and my sisters have all been very, very, um, my sisters work very hard in the civil rights movement. They come out of Roslyn. Um, actually, I saw some pictures to that effect where you were all marching in Seattle. Oh, um, yes. I'll, I'll find it for you. You're Kay. right here. This one here is. No, here's no, one. That's it, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, that on. was a march for Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. And that picture, of course, is myself. And uh, that was after, really, it was after Martin Luther King had died quite a few years. Mm -hmm. But before he died, we did a lot of marches. And even on Olympia. We marched on Olympia a couple of times. And you recognized that capital I, real well I, when I came and got you. That's the only thing I recognized <laughs> was a capital because that's where I spent yeah. most of my time in Olympia. 
you yeah. know, demonstrations. My mother was, um, in fact, one of the first black lawyers I ever saw was one my mother hired because um, the story doesn't bother me now. It did bother me when mm -hmm. I was younger. But what had happened, a policeman had beat up my brother-in-law and almost killed him. Mm -hmm. And so uh, mother hired a man who happened to become Judge Tanner. I, yes, uh, I'm a <laughs> No, not Judge Tanner, another judge. Another but, judge. Yeah, another judge, not Tanner. And uh, that was the first black lawyer I ever saw. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they had black lawyers. Yes. I didn't know they had black doctors because I lived in a town that was mostly Caucasian. One of the black lawyers that I was very familiar with was um, the late Karl Marxi. We might as well acknowledge him. Yes. He had been the civil rights lawyer for the government, uh, for the White House, for four presidencies. And um, I was on the road when I read about his tragic death. He yes. uh, unfortunately chose not to be with us anymore, but he was a beautiful, wonderful, yes, light was. being. Yeah, he was very, very he nice. Was. One of the things we do to educate people about the black pioneers is we um, have floats in a parade. Oh, yeah. And I don't have the latest float because it was the fanciest and the nicest. And, but I have a picture of the first one, which happened to be a pickup truck with a picture of my mom and daddy. <laughs> and um, I'll find it. And it's it was, it's it the took, only colored picture yes, we and have. And it took 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's our first float 10 years ago, mm -hmm. 1989. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's my granddaughter, Tayana, and her cousin and best friend, Foxy, riding it. And in the back of it, it you can't see it, but there's a picture of my mom and my dad done by an artist. And that was our first float. <laughs> first float. And then, yes, and this is one our, second our, float. This is one about six years, our six-year float. Mm -hmm. But the last one's motorized. We ended up with two motorized floats. This one here. Yeah, that was the 4th of July celebration in uh, Cleelum, Washington. Mm -hmm. And so we've done our last floats. All of us have gotten to the age where we feel that we should step aside and pray that the young ones take over it. Yeah, and we've done the last color picture because it's the only colored ones we have. Mm -hmm. So we're back to the black and white. And we also do lectures in the colleges mm -hmm. and the high schools when they call us. Usually they call us in Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And we'll go and talk about the Rawls and Black Pioneers. Because, and it's really interesting. I have a sister who designs the floats and things. And she goes to the grade schools over because she lives in Seattle or Renton. Mm -hmm. And she goes over here to the grade schools and talks about black pioneers. And she has a lot of artifacts mm -hmm. like old coal buckets. Now, coal bucket is a three piece bucket, it's out of aluminum. Mm -hmm. And I wish I'd have brought it. I have a, a, that black one in front of my door. Uh -huh. I think that's a coal bucket. Is it three parts? No, it's one part. I don't know what happened to the oh, rest of okay, it. Oh, OK, but it's usually, they're usually aluminum, but they could have been painted. Mm -hmm. And the bottom part is about that high, and it holds water. Oh, And right. then the other inset goes inside, mm -hmm. and it holds the food. How modern. And then, on the, then it has a top, mm -hmm. and the one that I have isn't from Dad. Mm -hmm. But Mother, I don't know how she got hold of five of them. But I, she gave me one that's all dented up for the, you know, the rocks hit it when they're do, working in the mines and exactly, things. Exactly, yeah. I, I believe my daughter told me they have a new cookware now where it's all stacked in one part and it all gets done at the same time. Oh, so I really? guess that's identical except now. And my dad was so special. He, I know he had to be hungry and he didn't have that. He used to always carry pork chops, mm -hmm. bread, and Twinkies. Twinkies. <laughs> and wow. they were very good. <laughs> yeah. Usually for... And he'd always managed to bring home two so we could eat, have them when he got in. He'd give us the Twinkies. So that shows about love. It does. Um, now, there's a story about Mr. Shepperson who brought the blacks in mm -hmm. and how he, because I wondered why he was chosen. You know, I, I'm all, I've been thinking for a long time, but I didn't ask him. Mother was almost 85. And I asked her, I said, well, why was he chosen? And it comes. The story is that Mr. Shepperson lived on a plantation. Mm -hmm. The lawyer that was uh, hired to hire somebody to bring them in was the a gentleman whose father owned that plantation. So they were buddies and childhood mm -hmm. kids together on that plantation. So that's why it wasn't so hard for him to convince him because he knew him when he was a little boy. Exactly. And I thought that was yeah. really fascinating. Yeah. Um, I don't know where it was, Georgia or South Carolina, the plantation. Mm -hmm. So the um, NWI had hired the lawyer to 
get Mr. Shepherdson to do that. And he did it as a favor because no telling what happened on that plantation. You might did him a favor or not. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Now yeah, Rawlson now does not have a has, store. It has doesn't have a grocery store. And it does not it has one theater and it has restaurants. And one tavern. Oh, it has more than one tavern. You well, stay I, have about I've, twenty. I've been to one. It like has, right outside your house. Yes, it's very close to my mm -hmm. house. You can throw something at it. Exactly. It's called the pastime. That's the one. But yeah. there's another one on the other side of the street. There's two. Mm -hmm. And so we have three taverns. There used to be twenty. Mother said there's twenty taverns, I think ten churches. Tell us the tell me the story about the camel on one of the buildings. Oh yes. The one for northern exposures that you right. see northern exposure. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't understand why. Mm -hmm. Uh, the camel was there because it's a cold place, and I think of a camel in the desert. Yeah. But then what happened was the owner of that store, I believe he was from, I don't know if it's Lebanon, but he was from an area where it was deserty. Mm -hmm. And so he had it painted on the outside of the store. That's it's not really a store, it's a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So, that's, called how the you got it. so that's, that's how you got the camel. That's how he got the camel. Mm -hmm. And it's real famous all over the world now mm -hmm. in Japan. Exactly. Because yeah. they show the show Northern Exposure in Japan and Germany and every place. Which was a very spiritual and metaphysical show. It really it, was. It was a good day for Vaslan when it was chosen It for really that was, show. and it was um, there quite a while for shows, mm -hmm. for a set. Yeah. But one of the things that was interesting, the brick, mm -hmm. that's well known, which is a tavern, so mm -hmm. that's four taverns. That's right. That's right. Four taverns. Um, they used it for a short time. They couldn't use it long because it was out of brick, and the sound effects were bad. Mm -hmm. So they took and built one in, um, not Edmond, Redmond, Washington, mm -hmm. similar, and they used it. But at first they did use the brick. The little one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the brick has only running spittoon in the Washington state. Yeah. You have... Uh, the only piece of paper we have here, you know, mm -hmm. we have an hour, and we, uh, I don't, I, I want to share this because I know it was really important to you yes. as an individual. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where that fits, but you wanted to read this poem? Okay, I wanted to read this poem because it really uh, describes and um, tells how all of his um, children felt about him. Oh, and your this, father. My father, yeah. uh, Mr. Samuel Lawrence Craven. Mm -hmm. There's a son, Samuel Craven, named after him, but it wasn't Lawrence. And I have a sister who writes poetry, but exactly. she doesn't share it. So I kind of snuck this yeah, so from some of my mother's papers. And we're not going <laughs> to share And I'll tell her it's OK. <laughs> and I'd like to read it because this is, uh, she wrote it after Dad died. And it says, written in memoriam of Samuel Lawrence Craven of Rawlson, Washington, Father Linda Lee Cornelius, that's my sister, author of the poem listed below. And it says, if there was a phone number listed for Jesus, or if heaven had a phone, I dial the number today, Daddy, and ask if you felt alone. Because your children here on earth are lonely and silently, a few of them cry. Others tear their hair with sorrow and cry, oh my, oh my. It's been a year today, so it's a year after he uh, died that she wrote this. Daddy, since that fateful July 12th, when they woke me from my sleep and said death had come with stealth. And I took my dear sweet daddy and took you, my dear sweet daddy, to your reward beyond the sky, to live on milk and honey in that sweet by and by. You have crossed Jordan's river, you have heard Gabriel's trumpet sound, and knowing you, my daddy, you never once turned around. Mm -hmm. I'll always remember you, my daddy, and the smile you always wore upon your face, even in death, after you had run life's race. Yes, I talk with Jesus on his royal telephone. I say, tell my daddy he'll not be alone, because we're we'll all be coming someday, daddy. Just hold out your hand. Your sons and daughters and offspring will reach the promised land. Oh, how wonderful. I think it's beautiful. It makes yeah. me cry, and I haven't read it in about 20 years. Okay. But it's beautiful, yes. Thank you really for sharing that, even if you did have to sneak it. So, <laughs> I'm sure they'll forget That's you. okay. She, do, she won't yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah, she won't mind. Okay, so we have done that. And then I put this over here. We have, uh, this may not show well, but um, when the blacks came into Rawls, the mother said they used to have a big picnic, and it was called the Emancipation. 
Emancipation Day picnic, mm -hmm. which was the day then slaves were supposedly freed. Mm -hmm. If I give you the wrong day on Emancipation Day, I have a friend that would never forgive me, so I'm not going <laughs> to tell And I'm you. not going to either. Good. <laughs> <laughs> because they received it in Texas, I think, three months later than the time it was actually e done because exactly. communication was very slow compared to it is today. Exactly. That's why I'm not going to tie myself <laughs> down today. In fact, that's a, you know, that's a show by itself it that is. in its entirety mm -hmm. we could talk about Emancipation yeah. Day. So they and had a picnic, mm -hmm. and they called it the Emancipation Picnic, Mother said. And at that time, there's so many blacks in Rawlson. And they, she said they'd all come, and they'd have this huge party out at Peel Point, which isn't too far from Rawlson, on this farm. And uh, they w would also invite the Caucasians, and they'd bring their stew, Irish stew, she called it, mm -hmm. and things like that. And they'd all have party and dance, you know, and rather dance and just enjoy themselves. Well, this picture here, which may not be the best, because the one I just showed you yeah, had. Yeah, we, we showed that. Um, is a picture of some of our relatives, mm -hmm. just some of the relatives that come, because about, oh, I'd say 10 or 12 years ago, my sister that was in the picture with Mr. Shepherson, she started it over again because it stopped. Mm -hmm. And we just call it family reunion mm -hmm. for uh, family and friends reunion. And we have it every August, the first Saturday in August. And we all our family that can come, comes over, mm -hmm. and then the friends, and then we invite anyone else to come. We have races and we get to see all the new things, the new babies and all the latest things that happen. and. Um, it's really a wonderful, wonderful time. And the reason we did it is because my sister figured, well, we'll only get together for funerals, our weddings, mm -hmm. mainly funerals. So let's get together for a happy time. So she restarted that. So with the new millennium, and uh, we're getting, we getting um, very educated about our uh, neighbors of other ethnic groups. Yes. So maybe by the year 2000, everybody get together and have the Wouldn't same. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And have the same thing in mind. Wouldn't no. that be wonderful? Because right before we have ours, a week before, there's usually a Croatian picnic. Yeah. <laughs> and we go to it, and we have a lot of fun. So yeah. um, So we have to start a new tradition. How's that? A what? We start a new tradition. Well, sure. Cool. Yeah. But the only problem with Rawls, and then, uh, like I said, they don't have jobs for young people. Mm -hmm. So. We all had to leave unless you married someone that worked in the mines at that time. Now there's no yeah. mines. So there's lumber and there's working on the roads mm -hmm. and tourist things now. And now the young ones have to leave to go other places to get jobs. Yeah, that's like, that's kinda just like sad. everywhere else. Yeah, but then yeah. you don't know. One of these days maybe enough Never tourists know. will come and it, it, it put you on the map, didn't it? Well, they say we're on the, well, we do have a sign now. Oh, you do. It used to That's be years right. ago. People, but it's, it's about this big and this long. But it's long. bigger than it used to be. There okay. used to not be no sign at all. In oh. fact, Rawson was not on the map, mm -hmm. on the map itself. People, I'd say, from Rawson, where is that? Yeah. And now they know because of Northern Exposure. Exactly. A lot of people know. Yeah. And they come just to take pictures. Yeah. And um, it's a very, very interesting uh, oh, there's my pen. A place. I'm lost without my pen. That's now, my uh, mother and sisters and I were quite active in trying to bring changes. Yeah. And uh, we didn't bring a lot to Rawls because it didn't need change. It's still it's a pretty neat place. But when we were in the city, we did a lot of active things, like I tell you, in the marching. But one of the things, my mother's, this is my mother yeah. on the top. It's, not, it's an old newspaper. And what had happened, that's my oldest sister, the second one down. And what had happened in Seattle was her son, her grandson, had gotten hit when he was crossing a road that should have had a crosswalk, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't put one on. So I remember so strongly my sister was very upset because mm -hmm. we talked, called down the city for years and asked them to put this because there's a lot of children in a big project there, yeah. apartment house. So when he got hit, my sister said, that's it. We're going to change things. Yeah. So what she did, she called mom. She said, Mom, are you ready to sit in the middle of the road? She did. And mama said, yes. Yeah. And that's it. When it says, let there be light, I remember getting chairs and sitting in the middle of a busy highway to get a light. Well, the light didn't come within the first six months, but about a year later, 
there was a light there so those young people could cross to go to school without getting hit. Well, we have to take a stand for what mm -hmm. we believe in. It, 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 is, it is because of the pioneers that we mm -hmm. are where we are and who we are and because they took a stand for a lot of things. I call things. it pioneer spirit. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Coming from great grandmother, I always mm -hmm. say, you know, because it took something to go as far as she did with a child at yeah. 17. A long ways. Almost 3,000 miles. Yeah, long ways. So, uh, uh, the, uh, and it's important to know black pine uh, people were part of the pioneering energy. Let's see, there was one lady, um, I remember, we, we're getting kind of short on time okay. here. Okay. There was one lady, she had been in a frame. And oh, we yes. Took her and out she, and uh, let's go her there. name was, um, I called her Mrs. Hardy, Hardy because you didn't call older people by their first name, so I don't know what her first name is. And what she did is, I don't know if you'll find the picture, but every 4th of July there used to be a big festival and party and carnival and all kinds of things. And there she is. There she is. And um, there we found her. She made a dress because they gave prizes for the best dress and most unusual. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I don't know if you can really see it because it's such an old picture, but that dress is made out of stamps that she collected over the years. That was, that's important. That's and a neat uh, the dress. whole dress is all different stamps. Mm -hmm. And she won the prize for the most unusual costume. Well, and that was way before, that was before I was born. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she oh, was great. a very lovely woman. She was a midwife. Yeah, that was a midwife. Yeah, she yeah, was, was a midwife. About and I also found out my mother had been a midwife. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that till 10 years ago. And she's also a midwife, but uh, I remember her. She made quite an impression on my life. On a personal, what would you like to impress on the new generation? In which way, dear? In many ways. Um, uh, okay, I would say that I don't care what race or what nationality you are. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important to remember and honor your roots. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And take a stand for what you believe in? Well, you know, <laughs> that's automatic. That if you believe something strongly, to take a stand, and I almost want to say it no matter what the cost is, but I don't want to really say not, no matter what the cost, but stand up for what you believe. Mm -hmm. And you stand, and not only stand, I really think, because I really think right now is the time of very strong apathy mm -hmm. in the United States. And many things are happening that's thrown people back quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And we must not be worried about no. what people think no. and to be different because this is you, a new right. millennium and that's this true. is a time to be different. And we are different. Each person is different but similar. Mm -hmm. And that difference is what makes it such a beautiful rose garden on earth mm -hmm. here. Now like the lady here, had she not one distress of stamps, we would not have talked about No, her. and I would, who would have thought about it? I mean, you know, probably people thought, oh, what are you doing with those stamps, you know? In the, yeah. But now, 40, 50, 60 years later here, I'm appreciating it, but I really think it's very important to stand for what you believe. Mm -hmm. And not only stand, but action, peaceful, loving action. That's, yeah, peaceful, that's a- uh, um, Loving I, action. Because, uh, here in the later years, nothing was, uh, everything was done in a peaceful yes. manner, but very firm. Firm but peaceful. peaceful. Because I believe you have to affect people's hearts mm -hmm. in order to change their thinking. Yeah. And I don't think you can do it through violence. That's very true. That just creates fear. Mm -hmm. And it may be, you may change it for a short time, but it's not changed. Yeah. It's only until they can figure out how to get around that. Yeah. But when the heart's changed, yeah. yeah, like Akhenaten said on his show, when you hear something, send it to your heart. If it feels right, do it. If it doesn't, just put it away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Roslyn was a wonderful place to grow up. I wouldn't choose a different place. I'm glad my grandmother came. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad your grandmother came too. And maybe in a few years, your museum, is, is it open now? Uh, well, there's a museum there. It's a very small museum. It's not what I... Um, hope for the future for my family. Hopefully we'll have a black museum there. Mm -hmm. There is a black museum in Tacoma, 
but I'd like to have a black one, museum in Roth. One. I misunderstood. I thought it was no, there's already a museum. No, in there's no black one. In some no, I know you did when I talked okay. to you, but they have a museum. There's a woman called Mary Andler, mm -hmm. and she comes from a large family. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a wonderful museum there, and she has some pictures of the black. That's what you saw, the pictures yes. you saw that yeah, she well, gathered I'm psychic. them. Maybe I was you are, I thought time. about that when yes. you said so that. Because I, said, I saw it. I've been trained and thinking about yeah. it. My sister's been talking about a black museum. Mm -hmm. And so you might be tuning in to what we feel is going to be eventually. Eventually, yeah. So yeah. And, and if you are on I-90 and go that way, you know, feel yeah. free to stop in. It's really a beautiful it, little it's town. A, it's a lovely little town, mm -hmm. really. I think it's going to change, uh, stay the same no matter what goes around it, because mm -hmm. it's a certain energy. It, yeah, it is really, and check out the really cemeteries. They're really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's one job you could create, um, a cemetery guide for the Well, they, ha they have that one. They did have one when they had quite a few in Northern McStowe's. was there. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of buses coming in, mm -hmm. and they did have a guide that took them to the cemeteries. So now he's on unemployment. I imagine so. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's working another job he was then. Uh, the Runner Stumbles is a film that also uh, was produced there. I'm with, not familiar uh, with that. What's his name? Van Dyke. Not the brother, but the... Oh, Van, Jer there's Jerry Van Dyke, and then there's... Um, oh, well, oh, anyway. Oh, somebody call us and let us know. Yeah. Jerry Van Dyke. Dick. Dick Van Dyke. And it okay, was with, thank and it was, you. And it was done in Rosalind was called it? The Runner Stumbles. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting. I didn't have much to do there except tear the wallpaper mm -hmm. and the gauze off the walls of the house you're going to set on fire. You did. I so did. So part of it. How yes, wonderful. that was the only part yeah. I had in it to make sure that nothing went out in the air. And, mm -hmm. But uh, it's amazing what they do with movies. It's just fascinating. It is. How they can make be, things look be, so real. Yeah. It's just, and it brings money into the little community. It does, yeah. Uh, Right now, they have um, sports are very important to them. Mm -hmm. Sports, basketball, baseball, tennis, boys and girls. So, uh, if, but the one thing about living in Rawls, and we have quite a few people that are in Kittitas County, which includes Roslyn. I can't El even say that. Kittitas. Ooh. It's an Indian name. Uh, yeah, I get it, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. And Who's South Cleallum <laughs> and Ronald and. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's about a thousand people who commute a day to Seattle My. from that county because they've found the wonderful spot that that is right there. Yeah. Well, um, we've really enjoyed taking you to this little historical um, trip to Roswell. And like I said, if you get a chance to stop there in person, um, I've been there and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, also, we're really grateful to you coming to share this with us because it's just all your family treasures. It's been a privilege. And, and so we really, really appreciate it. And, and teach your children that we have lots of different type of Americans and we all have a story to tell. And um, get together and compare notes and just see how everyone is really interwoven like a bouquet of beautiful flowers. And the more colors you have, the the more, well, maybe not prettier, but uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, no, you, let's use your word. Pretty. 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 Um, <laughs> the bouquet of flowers is, and um, I hope in the coming weeks that we will do some more intercultural shows for you. And uh, so if you have an interesting story to tell, please give us a call. And I don't know what to do with my hands because you got my pen. <laughs> And, and so it must be I hidden under here. Yeah, there it is. is. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's my security <laughs> blanket now. See, now that's I good that you have that. <laughs> Wonderful. It's a small one. <laughs> it is, but it's important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just to have this one. That's true. I can say that. solid. A crotch. Is it a crotch? security blanket? A security. My security just, blanket. It's okay. Right here. See, it's. I believe it's King. We all need it. It's beautiful. It's King Tut. Yes, I didn't notice that till now. Yeah. Wow, what a blanket. Yeah. So we're just going to hope that you come and see us next week. And um, winter is up on us. Uh, you should go to Vassal in the winter because <laughs> it gets, what, three, four feet of snow? Well, we used to get more, but I think maybe three or four might be what we get mm -hmm. now. So if that's more than yeah. um, 
you would like to be and this is not a good time they have snowboarding and they have the yeah. other thing with the little machine where they run over the snow and so we'll skiing. say goodbye and see you next week thank you for joining us <coughs>